In 4.3, we're going to solve quadratic equations, the baby versions. What I call the baby versions are the ones that have a 1 for A. They're a lot easier and more basic than what we'll see in 4.4. I'm going to show you four methods for factoring something like this. Three of them you've probably seen before in Algebra 1, maybe. And then we'll learn plant magic. So looking at this first problem, factor the expression. One way you might have learned how to factor this is to set up a list of factors of A, which would just be 1 and 1. And then on the right-hand side, we make a list of factors of 20, like 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. And then we had to find some way to connect these to get negative 9. Like we might try 1 times 1 and 1 times 20. That gives us 1 and 20. Can't get 9 with that. So then I might try slipping it, flipping it. And I still get 1 and 20 again. Can't get 9. So I move on. Maybe you erase this piece. Maybe you don't. I'm not sure. Then I try again. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times... 10 is 10. Can't get 9 with that. So I switch it, but it's still going to give me 2 and 10 again. Moving along, I try 1 and 4. 1 times 5. And I see that I can get 9 with that. Except I need them both to be negative, so I make this a negative 4 and a negative 5. Then we write 1x times negative 4 and 1x times negative 5. And we've got our factors. That's the first way you might have learned this in Algebra 1. That's the way we teach it here at Antelope. Another way you might have learned it is maybe you drew a box. A 2 by 2 box. You put in your x squared, you put in your 20. Then you needed to say, OK, what do I multiply together to get x squared? And x and x. What can I multiply together to get 20? Two things that multiply to give 20 are 5 and 4. I need them also to add to 9. Then say x times what is negative 5x? Negative 5. x times what is negative 4x? Negative 4. And then we get our factors. That's method 2. Another method you might have tried is just guess and check. You might have started off by saying something like, we want x squared minus 9x plus 20. Things that multiply to give x squared are just x and x. Things that multiply to give 20, you might try a few things like 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. And you would just try things until you found something that worked. You need to get that minus 9x in the middle. All of those are totally valid. I'm okay with you using any of them. I won't use any of those as I'm doing it. I'll do what I consider the easiest, Clinton magic. And to use Clinton magic, I'm just going to erase everything we see here and start over. If you need any of this stuff, pause and write it down. Clinton magic starts by drawing a big X, and we're going to put something in all four of the regions. The top of the region is always going to have A times C. The bottom is always going to have B. So let's see what that looks like in this problem. A times C would be 1 times 20. B would be negative 9. For the other two spots, we need two numbers that multiply to give the top, multiply to give AC, and add to give B. So we need two things that multiply to give 20, add to give negative 9. And a little bit of guess and check will tell us that's 5 and negative 4. On the top of this fraction in these two boxes, we're always going to put B. I lie. We're always going to put A times X. In this case, A is 1, so we just say 1X or X. Something that we're not going to have to do in this lesson, but we will have to do in the next lesson, is ask ourselves, does this fraction reduce? Right now the answer is no, so I'm going to write X minus 5. Does this fraction reduce? No. X minus 4. 
We could try Clinton Magic for part B also. Negative 12 on the top, 3 on the bottom, 1x on top of each fraction. We need two things that multiply to give negative 12 and add to give 3. I can't think of any right away, so I start making a list of things that multiply to give 12. 1 times 12, that won't give me 3. 2 times 6, that won't give me 3. 3 times 4, that won't give me 3. My next one is 4 times 3, but notice that's the same. Since I wasn't able to find anything, we get to say not factorable. Whatever method you choose for factoring, go with it. They're all good. At this point, you can pause the video and try these on your own, or you can do these later. This next slide tells us some special products. We've got a difference of squares. That means there's no middle term. So we can factor that using a formula. One that's not quite as easily recognizable is if the first term and the last term are both the squares of something, we should try factoring it as a perfect square trinomial. We have to make sure that middle piece matches up right by multiplying a times b times 2. If it does, we just write our answer as a plus b squared. If that 2ab doesn't match up right, we say not factorable. You could also use Clinton magic on any of these. That'll work too. So let's take a look. x squared minus 49. It looks like it follows the pattern of something squared minus something squared. x squared minus 7 squared. So we use our formula. If this formula looks familiar from Algebra 1, that's because it is. Part B looks like we have something squared and something squared. Before we can say this is a perfect square trinomial, look, I wrote the same thing again. We have to make sure that the middle is two times those things. And it is. So we get to say x plus 6 squared. And the reason we say plus 6 is not x, it's d. The reason we say plus 6 is because there is a plus in the original problem. We'll see a minus in part z, part c. We've got something squared, something squared, and the middle is two times those pieces. So it works. So we get to say z minus 13 squared. We say minus because b is negative in this one. At this point, you can pause the video and try a few of these on your own. Or you can do them later. Zero product property. It says if two things are multiplied together and equal zero, then one of them must be zero. That always has to happen. You can't multiply two numbers together and get zero unless at least one of them is zero. Maybe they're both zero, but definitely one of them. So let's see how that works out for us. We want to know the roots of this equation. So our first step is going to be to factor. Always factor complete when you're trying to solve. My favorite method of factoring, in case you didn't know, is Clinton magic. So I'm going to put A times C on the top, B on the bottom. Top of my fractions is always going to be A times X. A is 1 in this particular problem. On the bottom, I need two numbers that multiply to give negative 36, add to give negative 5. Sounds like 9 and 4 is going to work. I have to make the 9 negative. These fractions don't reduce, so I say x minus 9, x plus 4 equals 0. Now I've got two things multiplied together to equal 0, so one of them has to equal 0. That's what the zero, prop zero product property tells us from the previous slide. So x equals 9 or x equals negative 4. And we look for that answer. Another way you could have done this problem, if you don't remember how to factor on a multiple choice test, you could have always just plugged in the numbers until you found the two that worked. One of the nice things about a multiple choice test. Go ahead and pause the video, read this, and see if you can set up a couple of factors. All right, we've got a 400 by 600 meter nature preserve, and we want to double the area. 
So the original area we can figure out. It was 400 by 600, which is 24 with four zeros. So 240,000 meters squared. So that means we want our new area to be double that. So we want our new area to be 480,000. Get that by doubling 240,000. We also know the dimensions of our new nature reserve, kind of. It was originally 400 by 600, but both of those sides are going to be added onto by an equal amount, which we don't know yet, so we call it x. And altogether, that should equal 480,000. Should be an equal sign in there. Hey, look, it's magic. So we now have to solve this. And the way we would do that is we can't just set both of these sides equal to zero. We can't just say 400 plus x equals zero because this is not zero. So we have to multiply this whole thing out and come up with a new equation. Once we do this, we can try to make this equal to zero now. Making an equation equal to zero is always how we're going to solve for x in almost every problem. I see some big numbers here. Try not to get too scared. Hopefully it won't be too bad. So we try some Clinton magic. The numbers look huge, but it turns out that it works out kind of nice. I need two things that multiply to give negative 240,000 and add to give 1,000. Try simple numbers first. I might, instead of thinking of these huge numbers, I might think of chopping off three zeros. Things that multiply to give negative 240, or actually, let's try things that multiply to give 24, like 12 and 10. And let's make sure we put the right thing on top. 1x. Well, 12 and 10, not 12 and 10, 12 and 2 gives 24. We want four zeros, so I might put two zeros on each one. And I'd have to make the 200 negative, and it works out. Big numbers, but it turned out OK. So now we get x plus 1,200 times x minus 200 equals 0, and we get our two answers. Only one of them makes sense. Go ahead and pause the video for a second and try to think about which one of these answers makes sense in the context of the problem. If you guessed x equals negative 1200, you're wrong. You can't have, we can't lower the length of the side by 1200, but we can increase it by 12, 200 meters. You could always go back and check your answer. We're not quite done either. Let's find the new dimensions. We were 400 by 600. Now we have to add 200 to each. So 600 meters by. 800 meters. You can multiply those together and see that it is, in fact, 480,000. It was a big problem, but we got through it. At this point, you can pause the video and try these on your own, or you can do that later. Example 5 is kind of a break compared to the last example. It says find the zeros of the function by writing the function in intercept form. So you should be able to factor using any method you want, whether it's Clinton magic or whatever else and then get your two zeros. And we can use those zeros to draw a graph, which is really why we care. So pause the video, try this on your own, make sure you get the numbers I get. And maybe you noticed that part B was a perfect square trinomial, which means that we could use a shortcut if we wanted to. At this point, you can pause the video and try these on your own, or do them later. Other than that, we are done with this lesson.